Hi there. This is the second in a series of three videos in semiconductors. I'll be discussing the formation of a PN junction and how it performs when forward or reverse biased. Applications such as the solar cell and light emitting diode will be covered in the next lesson. Let's get started then. The diagram on the left shows a semiconductor crystal which is doped so that one side, the left hand side, is P-type and the other, the right hand side, is N-type. Remember from the first video that the majority of charge carriers in a P-type semiconductor are positive holes and in an N-type semiconductor the majority of charge carriers are negative electrons. Despite this, both are electrically neutral. Where the P-type and N-type regions meet is known as a PN junction. Here, electrons from the N-type material move across the junction and combine with holes from the P-type and vice versa. This is a process known as diffusion which creates a region within the semiconductor known as the depletion layer. The depletion layer is, effectively, an insulator due to the lack of majority charge carriers within it. The P-type region within the depletion layer now has a net negative charge due to the electrons diffusing into it from the N-type material. Similarly, the N-type region has a net positive charge due to the holes diffusing into it from the P-type material. Because of this, a potential difference is set up between the ends of the depletion layer, known as the junction voltage or potential barrier, which opposes the flow of further charges across the junction. In order for the PN junction to conduct, this junction voltage must be overcome. Now let's turn our attention to the diagram on the right. Here we can see the energy band model of P-type semiconductor, where conduction is due to the motion of positive holes within the valence band, and N-type semiconductor where conduction is due to the motion of negative electrons within the conduction band. When a PN junction is formed, the energy bands warp like so. The region in the middle is the depletion layer. Fully explaining the energy band model of a PN junction goes well beyond higher physics, so I'll not attempt it here. You can see though that the conduction band in the N-type has been lowered and the valence band in the P-type has been raised. This is the electrical symbol for a PN junction diode. We'll learn how it can be made to conduct when forward biased, but before that I should explain that this side, known as the cathode, is the n-type side, and this side, the anode, is the p-type side. Let's forward bias it then. To do that, we can connect the negative terminal of a battery to the n-type side, and the positive terminal to the p-type side. This has the effect of narrowing the depletion layer and if the forward bias voltage is greater than the junction voltage, then the PN junction will conduct. When looking at the energy band model on the right, you've possibly noticed that when compared with the unbiased PN junction, the slope in the depletion layer is reduced. This makes it easier for electrons to flow from N-type to P-type across the barrier, and similarly for holes to flow from P-type to N-type. So, when forward biased, Electrons within the conduction band of the N-type semiconductor move towards the conduction band of the P-type. Holes within the valence band of the P-type also move towards the valence band of the N-type. Within the junction, electrons drop from the conduction band to the valence band and recombine with holes. Energy is released during these recombinations and, in a PN junction diode, this is in the form of heat, which results in a rise in temperature. To reverse bias the PN junction, we connect the negative terminal of a battery to the P-type side and the positive terminal to the N-type side. This has the effect of widening the depletion layer and, when looking at the energy band model on the right, the slope in the depletion layer is far steeper. When the PN junction is reverse biased like this, the depletion layer has become a greater barrier to the movement of electrons from N-type to P-type and holes from P-type to N-type. There's almost no conduction apart from a very small current known as the reverse leakage current due to the motion of minority charge carriers. The PN junction diode then displays asymmetric conductance. Don't worry, this isn't a term you have to learn. What it means though is that the PN junction diode has a high conductance when the current is in one direction when forward biased and an extremely low conductance when current is in the opposite direction when reverse biased. This can be seen in the following graph of current against voltage. 
When forward biased, the supply voltage has to increase above the junction voltage before there's any noticeable increase in current as the forward biased PN junction conducts. When reverse biased, as mentioned earlier, the current is extremely small and the PN junction is effectively acting as an insulator. In the next video, we'll learn about applications of PN junctions, the light emitting diode and solar cell. That's us for now though. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.